Hi, thanks for clicking on this video. And today we're talking about foot fractures. We'll talk about how you can fracture your foot, what are some of the most common fractures that we can see on our foot, and most importantly, when you should get to the doctor or the emergency room even if you think you broke your foot. Let's get started with this video on foot fractures. Okay, so let's dispel a myth. The number one people think about foot fractures is, oh, I can still walk on my foot so it can't be fractured. Completely false. It's very common to have a small fracture or you could even have a big fracture, for that matter, in your foot and still be able to walk on it. So when you hear people say, or even if your parents have told you, oh, you can still walk on it, you couldn't have fractured it. That's not true. One of the most common fractures we see in the foot are the toes. In fact, the fifth toe or the pinky toe commonly gets stubbed in the middle of the night when people are getting out of bed to walk to the bathroom. They'll actually catch their pinky toe on something and it kind of gets partially fractured and dislocated and then goes back into place. Sometimes it doesn't actually get back into place. It'll stay dislocated and the patients out of fear or out of pain will hurry up and grab their foot and in doing so they put it back into place but it's still actually fractured. The big toe is another commonly fractured toe, and this happens when people stub it on something. They could be walking again in the middle of the night and bang into something, and this can cause an impact fracture on their toe. Probably the most common time that we see patients breaking their toe is in the middle of the night because they're kind of unsteady when you wake up and you're walking and you're not alert as you typically are during the day and you can kick something that you don't realize is there in the dark. So even if you can bend your toes, it doesn't mean that it's broken. Stress fractures are another common problem of the foot. The second metatarsal, which is the long bone going to your second toe, and that's more in the midfoot or forefoot area, is the number one fractured or stress fractured metatarsal of the foot. And this can occur with increased periods of walking. So if you just went on that vacation to Disney World and you're usually sedentary during the year or in the winter months during the, your work schedule, you're not as active and you're out walking, putting on maybe 20,000 to 25,000 steps a day, that's an increased activity for your body and your bones haven't been adapted to this amount of stress and this can lead to a stress fracture. So how do you know if you have a stress fracture? What does it feel like? Many times it just feels like a deep bruise or a soreness on top of your foot. And it only hurts with walking. When you sit down or rest at night, the pain usually goes away. And the key point to look for is that point tenderness. So if you're pushing on your foot and you feel an area that's very point tender over one of the metatarsal bones, that could be a stress fracture. And we sometimes see these in patients that start new running activities or new exercise routines. And again, it's because their body hasn't been adapted to the stress that they're putting on it. Fracture dislocations of the foot are other common problems that we see. And these are the number one misdiagnosed problem or fracture that I'll see coming out of some of our emergency rooms. And what happens is you'll see a subtle fracture or dislocation that we don't always pick up on x-ray and you need to get a more involved exam that's called a CT scan. So sometimes in just regular patients who aren't athletic at all could just be walking and they step off of a curb and their foot twists, their toes will point down and the foot twists. This can cause a fracture dislocation of the midfoot area. And we refer to this as a Liz Frank fracture dislocation. So you might see tiny fractures that aren't even picked up sometimes on an initial x-ray exam, but there are several bones in the foot that dislocate. And if these aren't put back together surgically, the patient can develop a collapsed arch over time and severe arthritis to the midfoot. So these are important fractures that need to be treated surgically sometimes, and if missed, they can be detrimental over years. Fifth metatarsal fractures are also common injuries. There's something referred to as a Jones fracture. A Jones fracture has that name for a fracture of the fifth metatarsal bone that breaks off at the base and there's a poor blood supply to this area, so Jones fractures always have to be treated surgically or they can go on to become what's called a non-union or that bone doesn't heal. And we see these types of fractures in patients that have sprained their ankle. So if you've sprained your ankle, but your foot's hurting, you might have one of these fractures that don't heal, so it's important to get in to see a doctor. We also treat ankle fractures as podiatrists, believe it or not. We see many of these in our practice. Patients can be falling off of curbs, they can be playing sporting events, sprain their ankle, and the fibula bone can fracture. While these might be subtle and you can still walk on it, it doesn't mean that you don't have a break, so it's important to get an x-ray. 
While fractures don't have simple treatment options at home, I think the most important thing to take away from this video is when should you go to the doctor or when should you get an x-ray? So let's rewind a little bit and review some of those initial fractures we talked about earlier and when you should go to the doctor to have them x-rayed. So another myth is, why should I see a doctor if I broke my toe? There's nothing you can do. This can be true, but if your toes don't look straight and you fractured a toe, if one's crooked, it probably needs to be put back into place because if it hasn't been put back, you can develop corns between your toes from that crooked toe rubbing. Whether it's a piece of the fracture that's dislocating and rubbing on the toe next to it, or the joints out of place, it's important to get it put back into place. Even more importantly is, if you broke your big toe and it's fractured in one of the joints, that can lead to arthritis. And we see these a lot where the big toe is fractured and the fracture line is running through the joint and as that joint continues to articulate or move, if it's broken, you can have cartilage degeneration or damage where you'll see bone rubbing on bone and you'll develop arthritis in the toe. So if you think your big toe is fractured, that absolutely has to be x-rayed because we want to make sure it's not dislocated or there's not a fracture that's displaced that needs to be put back together. So it's a myth that there's nothing that you need to do for a toe fracture. What about stress fractures? These aren't commonly picked up on x-ray because it sometimes can take two to three weeks until you're seeing bony changes around that fracture stress line. But if your physician has an ultrasound unit, sometimes they can pick up on these fractures early on. Or if you're an athlete and we need to get you back to activity, we'll sometimes order an MRI if we can get your insurance company to cover it immediately. And MRIs can also pick up stress fractures early on. And as I had referred to earlier, the number one spot for these is the second metatarsal. What about that dreaded midfoot dislocation or the Liz Frank fracture dislocation that I talked about? these must be x-rayed. Even patients that have gone to the ER and they have that simple x-ray and they were told they didn't have a fracture, if you had a severe trauma to your foot, you had the x-ray, they told you it was negative, but your foot is still severely swollen or bruised, that means something's going on and it's important to get another opinion as these are commonly misdiagnosed fractures. What about the Jones fracture? Remember if you sprained your ankle and it's not your ankle that's hurting, it's the outside part of your foot, that's the fifth metatarsal, or the complicated Jones fracture that may need surgery. And these are quick to fix. We can simply put a single screw down this fracture site and make sure that you're not one of the patients that develops a non-union or a non-healing fracture. And again, another common fracture are the ankle fractures. So if you've sustained a sprain or you were playing basketball on the weekend and hurt your ankle and think, well, it can't be broken because I can still walk on it, it's not true. Make sure to get in to make sure that you don't have a fracture of your fibula or even some deep fracture to the ankle joint on the internal bones of the ankle, which sometimes aren't picked up on x-ray, and you'll need an MRI to see these. Well, that's it. That's all I have to talk about fractures. Thanks for clicking on this video. Make sure to subscribe to see more videos in the future. If you have any questions about your foot or think that you may have a fracture, leave it in the comment section below and we can try to get that answered for you. And if you have any other conditions that you'd like to hear me talk about, please leave it in the comment section below as well. Thanks again for watching.